wit. I've got some ID. Oh yeah. Can you see my ID? Mr. Sherlock Holmes. It's a pleasure to see you again, Inspector Lestrade. You remember my associate, Dr. Watson? I insisted there was no need to call any amateurs, but apparently the Commissioner thought you might be some help. I must admit, we've got a real mystery on our hands here. And frankly, I'm at a loss to explain it. There's a surprise. Don't move. Oh, Lestrade. Lestrade, it's, it's me. Watson. What are you doing here? Lower your pistol, Inspector. I can assure you the doctor's harmless. What did this? Well, you wouldn't We were wondering the same ourselves. We were taking our early morning constitutional when we heard a great ruckus and came to investigate. Yes. What are you doing here, Inspector? Same as you. What of it? This wouldn't have anything to do with a coronet case, would it, Holmes? Not that I can tell, Lestrade. Yeah, well, you tell me if you make any headway. I better report this mess. Good morning, Lestrade. What are you doing here? I was just about to ask you the same. Lestrade, how is it you always just conveniently turn up the crime scene? So, you admit this does have something to do with our case, then? It may, Inspector, it may. One must follow all leads, just as you followed us here. What are you talking about? Come now, Inspector. It rained early this morning, did it not? And as I can see that the mud on your shoe is of the same colour and consistency as a type found only in diverse parts of London, including Baker Street. As I tell no one of our whereabouts, plus the promise of your arrival, leads me to infer that you waited for us outside our home and followed us in the next hansom. No matter, I shall like to focus on what's in the factory. Not so quick. I'm going with you. Records are in my office. Yeah, well, be quick. I'm right here, make sure you don't do a scoot. Yeah. Holmes. I'm sorry about what I did to your brother, mate, but I had no idea. I had no idea. Bloody guns. We should never set eyes on me, Bulldog. What'd you say? Well, me wobbling bulldog, me gun. I thought the force were issued with the Mark Ones. No, I'll choose a bulldog. The striations on this bullet prove that it came from Mark One. What? You weren't to blame. Can you tell me how you stopped the attack? Did you save the Queen? Right. Well, first of all, I'd like to make it clear that I do not consider myself a hero, right? But there was a job to be done, and it fell to me as an officer in a matter of Holmes and I never again spoke of the events of that night. And to the best of my knowledge, that was the only time I ever knew my friend to fire a gun. It is he, the evil one. Do I know thee? I know that thou art the agent for the evil spirits that has been bringing down our troubles upon us. Now, you shall be slain. And your blood shall be scattered around the castle grounds as an appeasement to the gods. 
This is the only way that the gods will realize our commitment to the task of ridding this land of all evil. And of being worthy of the gods' help in defeating the Saxons. And you would rid yourself of your only hope in defeating the Saxons. Mage! I have seen the visions of the one who bears the mark of the Elder Tree. He will bring ruin to our land, death and destruction. Have you been to Bangkok? Eh? Eh? Lady boys. <laughs> Lady boys, Jesus. Oh, you have to see them now. And that was my very first experience with lady boys. <laughs> Better than sheep, aren't they? <laughs> no, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Nothing's better than sheep. Yeah, do you know Costos? Who? Costos, cleaner down the factory. They call him Costos de Mestos. You, know, oh, yeah. you <laughs> must have seen him, little fella. Costos de Mestos. Yeah. Anyway, cheeky fucker, what he's done is he's gone on one of these booze cruises, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's only hired a lorry, isn't he? <laughs> Say something. You killed him. What? I knew he was on the gear. Where's he getting the money from, eh? For a junk to shove it up his arm. Who was giving him the money? You fucking gave him the money because you fucking killed him. Cow. It should have been you who died to life. I was giving him money. You were giving him money. Yeah, yeah. you had a funny way of doing it. What was you doing with the fucking money? Get the shit out of him every other time you saw him. Get your fucking shit out of me. You're a fucking cow. You're a fucking cow. Didn't I mean, fucking hell, give me a break here. Oh, that's fair. You can fucking get your fucking break, can you? She was, she was always in the habit of complaining about the size of her breasts. She was always saying that they were too small. And virtually every day she'd come in and say, Gron, my breasts are too small. Don't you think I could do with bigger breasts? Look at the size of my breasts, Gron, they're not big enough. Well, on this particular day, Gron turned around to her and said, Look, if you think your breasts aren't big enough, get a wad of toilet paper and rub it up and down in the space between your breasts and... Over time, your breasts will grow huge. Well, his wife was dumbfounded. And she said, Gron, do you really think that rubbing toilet paper between my breasts is going to make them huge? He said, well, it worked for your ass, didn't it? Like I say, Gron's in hospital now. But, I mean, he gets out on Tuesday and the doctors are fully confident they've given enough time and... Um, Specialist treatment. He may even walk again. Whoa.